is the difference between a top-down design approach and a bottom-up design approach? Well, my name is Rishi Ramju and welcome to the Backbench Engineering community where I make a journey easy for you. So, let us ask yourself that obvious question. What is the difference between a top-down design approach and a bottom-up design approach? Well, let's see that with a suitable example. So, everybody's dream is to own a house. So, there are two ways in which we can own a house. Either we can buy a house or we can build a house. So, let us assume that I need a house, a new house. So, let's assume that I am buying a house. So, when I buy a house, I look for the houses that are there on sale. So, here I see a house and I'm planning to buy that particular house. So, when I go to buy that house, I know the ultimate product that is there, which is a particular house. So, this particular house, I am seeing this particular house over here. So, this is the ultimate product, which is a house. So, here, upon further investigation, I see that this particular house has got three bedrooms. And this particular house has got two living areas. And this particular house has got its own dedicated home theater. So, upon investigating this particular house, I find these three. Now, upon further investigation, I find that each of these bedrooms have got attached bathrooms. And each of these bedrooms are air conditioned. And now here, in each of these living areas, I see that they have an individual balcony. And they have a provision for a television. And here, in this particular home theater, upon further investigation, I can see that it can seat around six people. And it has got Dolby Atmos. So, here, this is the top-down design methodology. That is, here, we have the ultimate product which we need, that is the house. And upon further investigation, we break down this ultimate product, seeing that it has got three bedrooms, it has got two living areas, and it has got a home theater. So, we have broken down this particular house into small, small modules. And now, we have broken down these into even smaller modules, which is an attached bathroom, an air conditioner, in the case of a bedroom, here. In the case of living areas, it has got a balcony and it supports a particular television. And here in the case of a home theater, it has got six people. You can see six people and it has got Dolby Atmos. So this is the case when we buy a particular house. And that is the case of a top-down design. But now, now let's assume that I don't want to buy a house. Let's assume that I need to build a house. So when a person builds a house, he will have a lot of things in his mind, a lot of ideas in his mind. So he'll be saying that, okay, fine, I need three bedrooms in my house. I need a home theater in my house. I need a swimming pool in my house. I need two living areas in my house. I need a dining room inside my house. So he'll have all these ideas. And he'll even have even more ideas, that is, each of my bedrooms must have attached bathrooms. It must be air-conditioned. Each of my living room must support televisions. Each of my living room must have a balcony. Each of my dining room must seat seven or eight people. So, he will have a set of ideas. So here, first idea is that he must have attached bathrooms in his bedroom. Then all his bedrooms must be air conditioned. So he has two things, two requirements over here. Next, he requires a home theater which can seat six people and it has got Dolby Atmos. And next, he needs a living room with a balcony. So here, this two together forms a bedroom and this two together forms his home theater and this is the requirement for his living area and these now converge into the house that a particular person is building so here this is the bottom up design that is we have a set of things or a set of problems that we have to solve and here upon ultimately solving this we would end up with the final product so this is the case when we build a particular house so, with this simple example between buying a house and building a house, we can understand 
what the difference is between a top down design and a bottom up design. It's as simple as that guys, there's nothing more to it. This is a simply what we refer to as a difference between top down design and bottom up design. So in most cases top down design is preferred because if we have an ultimate idea of the product that we need, then breaking down that idea into sub problems is always preferred. That is, if we have a problem, if this is a problem, we are breaking that problem into sub-problems like this. And these sub-problems are again broken down into sub-problems. So here, what we observe is that each of these can act as a module, that is, an independent module. That is, this is an independent idea. That is, this idea can be used for an entirely different product. That is, somebody else who is building a house, he can also use this as his idea. This is an individual module, this is an individual module. All these are individual modules. So a main problem is subdivided into simpler problems. So that is top down design. But in the case of bottom up design, we have a lot of problems already. These problems are known. This is the ultimate thing. The problems are first taken in. And by combining all these problems, we finally obtain the final product. So this does is simply the difference between top down design methodology and bottom up design methodology. As simple as that guys, there's nothing more to it. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of the difference between top down design and bottom up design methodologies. And if you guys found this video informative, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.